the enormous sexism. And it isn't just that there was sexism. It's that nobody stood up and said, it's unacceptable. You know, you cannot do this. You cannot say, uh, you cannot handle, uh, put up signs that say, iron my shirt. Uh, you cannot Where have, did you see that? I didn't see it. It was on, it was at a rally. I don't remember where. I saw it on television. But I mean, it was held up at a rally. But do you contend that was put forward by the Barack Obama? Oh, heavens, no. No, I, I contend that. No one said, this is completely unacceptable. If it, was, if it was a Barack Obama rally and someone said, shine my shoes, I think everyone would have said, that is completely unacceptable. But no, it wasn't that. So anyway, these are things that have caused a lot of hurt feelings and what, and, and they are problems. And so if we are to unify and move beyond it, you, you know, we can't just be told that we have to. So that's the problem. We're going to come back to this discussion after we conclude our discussion um, about the Clinton-Obama divide. Uh, we're going to talk about while the festivities are going on in Denver, Colorado, what happened in Mississippi? Again, one of the largest U.S. immigration raids in history. Over 600 people rounded up. This is Democracy Now! Our guest, Patricia Wilson-Smith from Georgia, an Obama delegate, Sasha Millstone, a Clinton delegate, Dolores Huerta, a Clinton delegate, who may well be um, placing Hillary Rodham Clinton's name into nomination tonight from the podium at the Pepsi Center. Center in Denver. Stay with us. Secret Station by 9th Street Mission here on Democracy Now!, Breaking with Convention, War, Peace, and the Presidency. We're broadcasting from Denver, specifically from the Five Points neighborhood, the historically black neighborhood of Denver, known as the Harlem of the West. Um, we're broadcasting from Free Speech TV, independent satellite television in this country, as we work in collaboration covering the convention. Next week, we'll be at St. Paul Neighborhood Network, uh, public access in St. Paul covering the Republican convention. We broadcast in over 700 stations on Pacific and NPR and low-power FM and college and community stations on public access TV and PBS stations, like the TV station in this building, actually, in Five Points, KBDI in Denver. Um, we also broadcast online. We video podcast, audio podcast. Our headlines are also available in Spanish for any radio station to take, as over 200 are around the country and around the world. We're talking about this historic convention convention that is taking place. Hillary Rodham Clinton spoke last night. Uh, tomorrow night, Barack Obama will be nominated to be president. It's expected around 70,000 people will be there uh, to cheer him on. Our guests are three delegates. Dolores Huerta of the Dolores Huerta Foundation, co-founder of United Farm Workers. She's a longtime Clinton supporter. She's campaigned for her all over the country. She may well be enter in entering her name into nomination tonight from the podium. Sasha Millstone is with us, a Boulder, Colorado Clinton delegate. Patricia Wilson-Smith is founder of Black Women for Obama. Uh, she made it from Georgia. You almost didn't. Almost didn't make it. Um, really, it, it just uh, it became uh, a, a 
uh, set of issues around kind of some personal things. Uh, my mom is, has been through some uh, some very serious surgery, that kind of thing. But uh, I was determined. Because and you had to raise money for weeks. Yeah, we had to raise money. We had to raise money uh, to make the trip. But uh, in the end, you know, none of the obstacles meant anything. It was more important to me, uh, first of all, to be part of the political process because it's the first convention I've ever participated in. And secondly, of course, because I've been working so tirelessly over the last year and a half for Senator Obama, I wanted to, to make the trip and, and complete the cycle. So uh, none of the obstacles mean anything at this point. It's been an amazing experience, and I'm really, really happy to be here. So. I wanted to go back to this issue, although Sasha Milstein, you say, I'm not thinking about this at all. I think this is uh, shocking, like, to someone like uh, Jose Serrano, the congress member who longtime supported Hillary Clinton, now supporting Barack Obama. The issue of how could you come out of the convention and then conceivably, possibly, sort of leave it open to vote for John McCain. If you could just say whether or not you've decided at this point, which clearly you haven't, what appeals to you about him? Absolutely nothing. I so never, how I never could you said. For him? I never, I never said I would. I, I never said that I was considering voting for John McCain. The question is, am I going to vote for Barack Obama? Who else might you vote for? There are, uh, there are choices. I mean, there are other choices, and there's also a choice to not cast a vote or to write in Hillary's name. I mean, there are choices that, that I have and that other people have. Ralph Nader is actually holding a rally today in Denver. Um, Cynthia McKinney has been speaking all over Denver, the Green Party candidate, Ralph Nader, independent. Are they possibilities for you? For me, I, I truly, I'm not even thinking about uh, those kinds of issues right now. Uh, but I just, I just uh, feel that that uh, the process that we've gone through um, has been uh, so unusual and so flawed that um, it it makes it very hard for me to. Uh, you know, feel completely comfortable at this moment. Can Dolores Huerta, you talk about the process of the speech. Um, I was reading in the headlines today uh, about uh, Hillary Rodham Clinton's uh, staff not wanting Barack Obama staff to even see the final draft of her address, this acrimony, it seems. Well, right up until now, it has not been resolved. Well, I think there's probably still some trust uh, issues that need to be developed, and I'm not speaking for, of course, anybody but myself. And I also believe that for many women, uh, there was almost like a depression that happened, I have to say, even for myself, uh, after Hillary uh, was not the nominee. And uh, and, it, and it's like when you're in that kind of a depression, you, you sort of have to come out of it. And I think this is what is, has been happening to a lot of people. And maybe because I'm a person of color myself, it's easier for me to then say and really, you know, get excited about uh, Barack Obama. Because, uh, you know, while because we, as women of color, uh, we not only face the sexism in the society, but we also fix, you know, uh, you know, have the racism, and then of course with me, the ageism also kicks in. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, I can, I guess, I'm, I'm maybe more understanding uh, of all of the different issues, and so I can understand. Uh, that's why I say the feelings are important. I think it's very, very important. And I've said this to Barack. I've met with him twice, and and my message uh, to him has been the same every time I met with him. That you know, uh, we, he's got to really reach out to the women. Uh, we need to have a woman's campaign. We never had this under Kerry. You remember, Amy, we talked then, because Kerry never put together a woman's campaign. And I'm talking about a woman's campaign where you have women that are really I remember issues. seeing you right. um, in 2004, and you said you were spearheading women for Kerry or something. You were the head of it. And they were celebrating you. But then you said you had no resources to carry no, through. We had no, no budget. It was a big secret. I mean, people say, oh, you were? <laughs> you know, and, and this is what I think uh, Brock has to do. Uh, and uh, we've got to reach out very, on a very personal level. Uh, 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 to women and, and make them understand that they're important to this campaign. And the same thing to the Latino community. And, and it isn't that they're against Barack, but because uh, there's, uh, you know, we just don't know him enough. And so he's really got to do a lot of retail. And I know he doesn't have a lot of time. Can you describe your meetings with him, Barack Obama? Oh, they have been really uh, wonderful. Uh, and, uh, it, and what I said to Barack, and, and I quoted Walter Fauntroy, who was, you know, the congressperson from, without a vote, from the District of Columbia. And Walter Fauntroy said, way back, and this was back in, I guess, in the 80s or so, that, you know, we can call the elections. You know, black, brown, women 
all of us together in white men of conscience, we are the majority and we can call the elections. And so I've always remembered him saying that and that he was kind of predicting what would happen in the future. And we're at that point now where we can call the elections and we can get a progressive candidates elected and really, you know, take care of these issues that have been uh, the cancers in our society for so long and, and, and get away with them. And I think this is what Barack's candidacy stands for because he can be a, a unifier, but uh, there's got to be some work done to make that happen. What do you need most done right now? Now, you were a vocal campaigner. We were trying to catch up with you all over the country. You were traveling for Hillary Rodham Clinton. Are you going to do the same for Barack Obama? Uh, yes, I am. I'm going to get out there and I'm going to work very hard because uh, we all know that all of these issues that we have, well, the immigration issues that you're going to talk about, the issues of racism, uh, our education, uh, you know, uh, with health care, we can just go down the line, uh, no jobs, uh, the whole prison system. And we have a society that is in crisis right now. And uh, we've got to 